Around a Basingstoke shopping mall, a load of posters suddenly appeared, placards, uh, saying it's OK to be white. Not quite sure what the reason for this was, uh, but police are now investigating that uh, as a potential hate crime. And I'm trying to search uh, my mind for to come up with a reason why they would be doing this. Uh, let's uh, talk to uh, co-founder of Don't Divide Us, uh, Mike EJ. Uh, good evening, Mike. Hello, Kevin. How you doing? I'm all right. Uh, what do you make of this? Good. I mean, it's kind of strange, these posters. They're placards and posters suddenly turned up around this shopping mall in Basingstoke uh, saying it's OK to be white. Uh, I mean, it's a cryptic, strange message, I suppose. <laughs> but the police are now investigating, trying to find the perpetrators of these posters uh, with a view to them having committed a potential hate crime. Is it a hate crime to say it's OK to be white? Well, I mean, to be fair, you can you can take issue, as I do, with the whole kind of philosophical basis of hate crimes. In I, the I do place. too, Ike. I'm on your side. Yeah, because um, before hate crimes were introduced, we had well-established laws for anti-discrimination and, um, and protecting um, protected groups. But um, it seems as odd to me as having love crimes, having hate crimes. We already have established laws to protect that. So, that, But putting that to one side... Um, I think with this issue, you can separate whatever's said on the poster. I mean, it's, I mean, I, look, it's it, it, obviously, yeah, it's okay to be white. I'm not going to make any judgment on that. It's hardly intellectually profound. But to my <laughs> mind, it's not illegal. I don't see why the police are investigating it. And I don't see why, even if you take issue with the principle of hate crimes like I do, I don't see why it would be a hate crime anyway. So, again, I don't see why the police are embroiling themselves in these politicized kind of um, wokest um, um, e um, episodes when they should be out solving proper crimes. Yeah, I mean, if you put up a poster saying it's OK to be black, uh, my guess is the police uh, would give you a double thumbs up and say, carry on. Great stuff. Well, it, 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 it's an issue. Yes, um, I, I'd be very surprised if it would be investigated as a hate crime. And that, again, exposes inconsistency. If we're going to have hate crimes, then we have to surely the mantra that underpins all of this is that word equality. And we have to treat everybody the same. And that includes the police. So as I say, my issue with this, not so much um, the merits or otherwise of what the science says, it's why the police, who I'm sure, I'm sure Basingstoke's a lovely town, but I don't imagine the police have nothing at all to do, why they should be focusing on something like this when I don't see it as being central to police work. Well, I think it plays into uh, this whole thing with the cops now. You know, they'd rather patrol the tweets than patrol the streets. Well, exactly. Uh, and and yeah. this, this is one of these kind of culture war type crimes that they seem to be very keen to investigate. You know, if, it, if it's burglary or you got beaten up or someone's nicked your car, they're not interested in that. But if you put up a sign saying it's OK to be white, they're all over all that. <laughs> they're... Exactly. I know. They... Well, I, I just had a quick look just before I came on and um anti-social behavior in Basingstoke has gone up by just over 10 percent in the past two years now i'm not a Basingstoke resident and i don't want to speak on anyone else's behalf but i imagine most Basingstoke residents would rather the police investigate things like that rather than otherwise um legal signs in my opinion as long as they don't contravene planning laws being placed up around the um town center yeah uh there's another not a similar story but plays into the discussion we're having. Uh, one of the world's biggest investment companies, it's called State Street. Uh, yeah, they employ, they employ uh, thir nearly 40,000 people in 27 countries, including yeah. 2,500 people in their Irish office, I think, in Dublin. Yeah. Uh, it's a 200-year-old company. Uh, yeah. And uh, bosses, the bosses there, have allegedly been told uh, that if, uh, when they're recruiting staff, if the, the staff that they hire is a white man, uh, they better have a damn good reason for it. They need to give special reasons for why they're hiring a white man. Uh, mm. In other words, hiring a white male uh, seems to be against company policy. I should stress uh, that State Street are denying this, but there are okay, there are good. there are emails and memos around that do seem to back up the fact that it is now yeah. frowned upon uh, to hit, hire white males at that company. Uh, now, if that is a policy, that's racist, isn't it? 
Well, of course it is. I mean, this whole idea now, and it's infected lots of society, of diversity quotas, of making sure that you almost have this kind of um, racial checklist of how many people you have in your company. Fair enough, it sounds wonderful. Yes, we want to imply more people from a certain race, but the moment you do that, obviously you're disadvantaging and pre preventing other people from another race joining your company. And it's all based on this myth of positive discrimination. The clues in the word, discrimination cannot be positive. If we want to get to a world where racism doesn't matter, then we can't use race to determine employment. It's going backwards. And does that not, does a policy like that, does that not disrespect people of colour? Because it's giving, well, of them, it does. It's giving them special breaks merely on the basis of the colour of their skin and well, not on their quality as a candidate for the job. Well, what it's saying is that people of, well, the people who are, belt, are being helped, whether they're black or Asian, they're too stupid or too poor or too uneducated or too incapable of doing the job unless more, better white people are moved out of their way. I mean, it's deeply patronizing. I wouldn't want to get any job on the basis that someone felt sorry for me because they looked at me as disadvantaged. They didn't think I could do the job as well, but because I was black, I needed some help. And, you know, they kind of pushed a few people out of my way. Look, I, I, I just think it's wrong. It doesn't necessarily come from a bad place. Yeah, I was going to say that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the, imp the impulse of these country of these companies uh, is a good one. You know, they, 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 this this company, uh, uh, State Street, apparently looked at pictures of all their bosses uh, from 50 years ago and every single one of them was white. And they thought yeah. that was a bad look. And I agree with that. Yeah. But what we're talking yeah. about here, Ike, uh, is and, and State Street aren't the only companies, companies all over the world. Oh. Massive overcompensation. Yeah. Lots of companies. And again, I don't, as, as we said, it doesn't necessarily have to come from a bad place, but what it's doing, it's not fixing the problem. It's using diversity, which to a degree, it's a superficial numerical signifier. It's not what matters. What matters is integration. And when you have a properly integrated society, then people from any background, any group will feel empowered enough to go for those jobs naturally without needing to be patronized and helped by quotas based on their racial ethnicity. So, so yeah, um, I mean, being generous, it's not from a bad place, but it's still, I think, doing harm. Well, it's, it's sort of uh, guilty white people overcompensating and I think creating a whole new problem. Yeah, it's very often the case. And um, kind of liberal white guilt drives a lot, a lot of this stuff, basically. And I mean, we, 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 we look at white supremacy um you know the the, the traditional kind of um deep south american racism as something bad obviously but obviously sometimes if you look at the way white liberals treat um black people it's kind of the same kind of oh they're inferior they they can't do it themselves it may not be burning crosses but it's still that same kind of patronizing marginal marginalization that doesn't get us anywhere. Yeah, the kind of people who say, I'm not a racist, uh, I've got lots of black friends. I mean, exactly. it, it is classic middle class uh, claptrap, to be honest with you. Guilt. But uh, uh, hopefully we're on the route to a better place. Uh, Ike, uh, sure. great talking to you. Thank you very much. Ike EJ there, co-founder of the Don't Divide Us organisation.